Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session of Patent Center Training. My name is Marcus Jackson, and I'll be your presenter. This is a look at what we'll be covering in today's training. Uh, the goals of today's training, one, to get users started and more comfortable with using Patent Center, and two, to get users already using Patent Center to discover something new. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is a brief overview of the Patent Center timeline. So you can see we're at 2023. We are preparing to retire EFS Web and Private Pair. Patent Center has 100% functionality uh, with the legacy, legacy systems. So Patent Center is ready to take over as the primary filing tool. Here's a look at some of the Patent Center benefits uh, and using Patent Center for electronic filing, you have access to DocMX, DocX and XML features. Sponsorships do carry over from EFS Web and Private Pair. A drag and drop for document upload. You can use your existing USPTO account to log in. There's role based access, and save submissions are available for 14 business or excuse me 14 calendar days, uh, which is an increase from uh, four, seven days in EFS Web. This is a look at the filing types available in Patent Center based on role. Uh, you can see that we have additional uh, types and features coming for practitioner support. This is a look at the accepted document formats for Patent Center. Patent Center is able to receive all of the documents uh, that you are available to use in EFS Web. Also, the SD26 bio sequence listing format is available for Patent Center filing. A look at some of the filing highlights uh, for Patent Center. The Web ADS, the uploaded fillable AIA 14 form, or delaying the ADS and entering data manually. Fee attribute features, also the ability to calculate and pay fees. Drag and drop, which allows you to, to upload multiple documents at once. Patent Center also features separate submission receipts. So the submission receipt and the payment receipt are separated out for convenience. Here's a look at some of the retrieval highlights. You can see many features have been added and enhanced. We have great resources available uh, for electronic filing and patent center. The Electronic Business Center is a call center uh, that's available between Monday and Friday from 6 a.m. to midnight Eastern time. They're available by phone or fax, or excuse me, email. And they can assist with submitting and viewing your patent applications electronically, customer number issues, web browser support, and also PDX and DOS registration. We also have the applications assistance unit available for help with applications that are in processing. And the inventors assistance center is available for help with questions on documents and formatting needed for your patent application. We have additional resources available. A list of these links will be provided to all registered attendees and available on our website for use. And so now we'll take a live demonstration look at Patent Center. We'll show you a few features, including filing, retrieval, and training mode. This is the Patent Center dashboard. As you can see, the filing options are available on the top navigation menu. And if you scroll down, you'll have activity cards with further in-depth information for each filing type. If you scroll all the way bottom to the Patent Center dashboard, you'll see that access points for Patent Center training mode. And if you're interested 
and bulk data download, you can access the PEDS API also. To enter training mode, you'll simply click the option to enter training mode, noting the prompts that the information will not be saved or stored or transmitted to the USPTO. Training mode is strictly a demo environment that allow you to interact with Patent Center as if you were filing a real application. You can see the banner indicating that you're now in training mode and the data will not be transmitted. So let's get started with filing a new application. For today's demo, we're going to look at filing a utility non-provisional application. And this warning is letting me know that I'm a guest user. For training mode, uh, we recommend that you do not use your USPTO.gov account. If you have a USPTO.gov account, you should log out of Patent Center before entering training mode. Training mode does not support customer number access. So after clicking our utility non-provisional option, we've got the application data sheet options. We've got three options for the application data sheet, the web ADS, the upload or fillable AIA 14 form, or you can defer the ADS and enter the application data manually. For today's demo, we will show uh, using the AIA 14 fillable form uh, with a key point. I want to show you on the form, uh, make sure that you've got this option disabled and let me get the form so I can show you. On your AIA 14 or the application data sheet, there will be a section where you can list a customer number for the correspondence address. And if you're going to be uploading in training mode, you want to make sure that you do not include a customer number because you'll get an error and you won't be able to proceed. So, uh, just really quick. This is the AI 14 form. And so for correspondence information, just make sure that you have an address is being provided and you can see we've got a test address available. If unchecked, the option will look like this and you just want to make sure that you do not include the customer number there. So I've selected my application data sheet. And Patent Center is loading the information that I've saved into the form and it's all auto loaded into Patent Center. So that saves some time and having to enter the data manually. And now I can continue to add my documents. So we mentioned the drag and drop feature for Patent Center. So this is a look at the file navigation menu for my computer. This is where all of my files are located for my patent application. So what I'm going to do is physically drag a document and drop into Patent Center. Just a moment to get my environment back up. Okay. So I've got my document and now it's floating in the drop section. And now my document has been loaded to Patent Center. You may notice that I did not have to enter the document description. Patent Center features 
an auto detection functionality for documents. So Patent Center was able to de detect the text for my document and apply the document description automatically as the abstract. If I wanted to update or change that description, there's an option menu indicated by the three dots on the icon. I'll select edit document description. And I have access to all of the application document description parts, and I can select a new document description. If I've made a mistake and I need to remove this document, I would select the menu also and select the remove document option. And that will delete the document for my submission. Patent Center also features a multi-part document support feature where I can have all of my application parts, specification claims and abstract included into one single document. And so my multi-part document is now being loaded. And with multi-part documents, you can see I've got three pages and I need to indicate where each part begins and ends. So I'll select split document and I can index each section. Patent Center also features a type ahead function so if I know the name of my document description, I can type it and intuitively Patent Center will provide descriptions that match and I can make my selection. Patent Center will show you the number of pages. So I've got three pages and I'll need to add another page. Once I finished uh, the indexing and I'm satisfied, I'll need to click done to make sure that that indexing is saved. And now the multi-part document has been indexed successfully and is ready to be loaded. attach a few other parts to my application. This is my information disclosure statement or IDS document. I'm also going to add a couple foreign references, maybe just one foreign reference. And I think I've got a non-patent literature document that I'd like to include, so I'm gonna add that as well. And you can see Patent Center has all of the document descriptions included. So now that I've got my documents uploaded, I'm ready to continue to the next part of the application. I can go back to the application data screen and make changes here if I need to. If not, the documents that I've added are maintained and I'm ready to continue. Patent Center will provide reminders along your way. This is a reminder that I'm still a guest user. I do have the option to skip fees. This is where I can indicate my entity status. And I can enter the number of pages for my specification, the number of claims, 
and any independent claims. If I need to include any petition fees, I would select this option and the petition fees will be reflected on the next screen. Patent Center will display all available USPTO patent fees and it's up to me, the filer, to select the fees that are applicable for my account or excuse me, for my application. The information that I entered on the previous screen, I can edit that here. Take me back. If I need to make an update, I can do that. And the change is reflected. Other fees are listed below. These menus are collapsible. And if I wanted to include any petitions, select that petition fee section. Now that I've calculated all of my fees, I am taken to the review and submit page. This is a look at all of the information I've entered so far for my application. So the bibliographic data is shown. The documents that I've uploaded are shown. I do have the option to preview. The fees that I've selected are shown. And now I can enter Filing information. If I'd like to start over, I have the option to cancel submission. Nothing will be saved. Everything will be removed and I'll start over. I can navigate back. For training mode, the save progress feature is disabled because accounts are not recognized. USPTO customer numbers are not supported in training mode. So I cannot retrieve a save submission. And now that I'm ready, I can click submit. And it's telling me that I've got an address missing. So I think I'll need to go back to my application data sheet. Since that's available on this page, I can click the X to delete and provide an updated application data sheet. If I'm in a rush and I don't have time to correct the document, I can select no ADS and type the information. So now that I've added my application data sheet information manually, that information will be reflected on the review and submit page. I'm ready to submit. One of the great uh, features about Patent Center is that as soon as you click submit, you will receive your application number. Uh, the submission receipt will be provided as soon as the documents are received successfully. You'll then receive your payment receipt uh, after you complete successful payment in the USPTO payment management system. The submission receipt contains my application number and timestamp, also a list of all of the data information and documents that I've uploaded. This is my electronic record of submission and my submission is complete. So now we'll take a look at some additional features the first will be the search feature. 
There's a search option on the nav window or the nav menu, and I can use the search field here on the dashboard or home screen. I'm going to type in my application number. So this is the application data screen for Patent Center. Got the application number and title listed and an indicator letting me know that I'm viewing the public view. So this is the public pair equivalent, the attorney docket number, the patent information is listed. Also, I can view my e-grant notice. E-grant is a great feature that is being rolled out for Patent Center. I'm able to download the grant notice and you can see it's been downloaded to my browser and I can open that and view that anytime. Another great resource available on the USPTO website is the sequence listing resource page. So this link will be provided with the resources we uh, provide at the end of the training, but you can see a wealth of links and information regarding sequence listings and information on assistance. Patent Center does support the SD23 and 25 sequence listing formats for follow on submissions only. For new submissions, SD26 uh, is available for applications filed after July 1st of 2022. So Patent Center does support SD26 for new application submissions. ST23 and 25 format is available for follow-on submissions. So now we'll take a look at some additional features in Patent Center, starting with the workbench. And for that, I'm going to need to sign in with my account. So this is a look at the uh, sign in process. Bring my username and password. If I need to check, I can do that. And it'll prompt me to send my two factor authentication or 2FA code to the location I've determined. Once I've retrieved my code, Enter that and I am logged into Patent Center. So the workbench has a lot of great features. I can access my saved submissions. This will show a list of submissions that I have prepared. And I can access those submissions that are saved and complete them. I also have the option to view applications that are already filed and pending. So this will be a look at all of my applications. And I can sort those by customer number using the options here. The workbench, I can also view any correspondence associated with my applications. So the information here, I can filter, I can sort the columns. I can also use filtering on the side, filtering by date. I've got option menus here, which allow me to customize the view.
So there's a lot of great features on the workbench as well. Column customization is wonderful feature. It allows me to focus on the data points that are important to me. You can see my applications here listed. I've got a lot of correspondence. Most of those are tests. I'd like to make sure that everything is functioning as well as possible. In addition to the correspondence, I can view the receipt history. And this is a list of all of the submission receipts that are associated to my account. And I can pull any of these for reference and view the receipt. So we'll look at the application data screen one more time and just review some of the features there. While I'm doing that, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter your questions into the chat. The e-commerce team has joined me along today for our session, and they will be working to answer your questions in the background. So we'll have a Q&A session once we complete the demonstration. So again, please enter all of your questions into the chat. We'd like to hear from you and try and get you on your way to using Patent Center. This is the application data screen. This is a public view, but I'd like to view an application that's associated to my customer number. So for this menu, I'll have a list of all of the customer numbers associated to my account. And if I'd like to focus on one, I can deselect all and select the customer number that I'd like to focus on. I can jump to a particular page of applications if I need to browse, so for this application, I have the option to edit the attorney docket number even after the application has been filed. Confirmation that the docket number has been changed and the new docket number is showing. That's a great feature. See all of the application data is shown. I can navigate to the documents and transactions, the IFW equivalent, the fee payment history, address and attorney information, as well as any supplemental content assignments, and references that are associated with this application. Got some reference forms and also foreign patent and non-patent documents are available. All this is for view on the application data screen. Users also have the ability to edit the entity status for an application from the application data screen as well. You can provide required information. And the change will be reflected in the application. There are a couple other features I'd like to show you, and then we'll get right into your questions. I see we have some coming in. It's not too late. If you have any questions on anything we've covered, please enter those into the chat. Select all panelists. And the USPTO e-commerce team will be working to answer your questions in real time. 
so that we'll have a Q&A session for you. So again, I'm going to focus in on one customer number. I'm going to navigate down. To a specific page of applications. One uh, thing to note for this application, you can see the indicator is showing private view. This application is associated to my customer number, but this application is not published. So it's not public record. It's not available uh, for the public to view. I do have the option to change or make updates to the application address. This is showing the correspondence address uh, that's associated to the account. But I can make changes uh, to addresses in Patent Center as well. I can also manage sponsorships on the manage menu. I can manage my customer number information, any saved requests, and sponsored users. So if you have sponsorships, sponsorships that you set up in private pair, uh, those will carry over. EFS web and private pair sponsorships are recognized in patent center. You can manage those sponsorship relationships here in patent center on the sponsorship menu. Great, so I see we have a good number of questions. So let's get started on those. Uh, if you have a question, please uh, do enter it. We still have some time, but let's get started on the questions that we have. Okay. Uh, before we get into the questions, uh, just to note, we will not cover detailed uh, DOCX questions in this session. Uh, please visit uspto.gov forward slash patents forward slash docx for docx information. As of the date of this training, the non docx surcharge uh, will not be implemented until 2024. So you can file PDFs without incurring the surcharge. Uh, please keep in mind that we encourage you to file your specification claims and abstract in docx format now so that you'll be ready when the surcharge comes into effect. Uh, the first question, in 2024, can you still use EFS Web to file an application? So at this time, EFS Web and private pair are planned for retirement in 2023. The next question, do you have to sign in to use Patent Center? If not, are there any advantages to signing in? Uh, you may use Patent Center as a guest, but there is limited availability to some of the functions and you cannot save submissions as a guest. If you become a registered user, you will further, you will have further access in Patent Center, such as viewing and saving submissions in progress in order to submit at a later time. Please review the filing types available slide for more information. Next question. When will e-petitions be available? I'm still filing them in EFS Web. That's a great question. All e-petitions are available in Patent Center to practitioners and independent inventors. The next question, can we file the application if broken out into sections as a PDF? Uh, you can upload the specification, claims, abstract, and drawings as separate PDFs. 
You can also upload a single PDF document containing the sections, but you have to split and assign a document description to each section. Please keep in mind that for a single document filed in DOCX format, the sections would be automatically split based on detected section headers. Next question. If I have my specification, abstract, and claims in one document with a file name of specification, will the system detect the individual sections or will I still have to split it? If specification is anywhere in the naming convention for a PDF containing all of the sections, the entire PDF will be identified as a specification. This applies to a claims, abstract, or drawings named naming conventions as well. Uh, the next question, what is the naming convention for NPLs and foreign references? For non-patent literature, the user can place the letters NPL followed by a dash or underscore at the beginning of a file name or place an underscore or dash before NPL at the end of a file name. This is also true for foreign references, but just replace NPL letters with the three letters F-O-R. Please see the Patent Center User Guide for instructions. And we have a few more questions coming in, so I'll try and get to those. Uh, are there forthcoming plans to have support team members logged in and access e-petitions, e-terminal disclaimers, e-issue fee payment options going forward? Uh, can we prepare those submissions in the future for the practitioner to access and finalize? And that's a great question. Uh, currently, practitioner support may prepare the Web85B for attorney signature. In the very near future, practitioner support will be able to prepare e-terminal disclaimer, corrected ADS, and e-petitions for attorney to, to sign. Uh, the next question is, why can't practitioner support submit e-petitions, e-terminal disclaimers, e-issue fee payments, and the corrected ADS? Uh, so, Patent Center is a role-based access system that follows the current business practices of the USPTO. Only the attorney has the authority to sign and submit these types of filings. How do I access the Finance Center? Uh, from Patent Center homepage in the black menu at the top, you can click on fees and payments and select the financial manager link. And our final question for the session. I see there is Web85 issue fee transmittal available. Do all issue fees have to be paid this way or can we still upload the transmittal form and pay the fee through the previous way? Uh, so, yes, you can still use the 85B form and provide your deposit account information. So, you can find the answers to more questions on the Patent Center FAQ page. I think that was our final question for today. So, Hi, we've MJ. of our session, or excuse me, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, um, since we do have a little bit of time, um, someone is asking if you can show um, the uploading of an NPL again because it didn't auto assign. So um, we told them that the naming convention has to be an underscore or a dash in the file name. That's so if, correct. if yeah. possible, could you show that? Sure, let me get that um, file document and show that. So we'll go back to Patent Center for that demo and just give me one second. Okay, so for that, uh, we'll get back to the home screen. And I'm gonna go back to training mode uh, to show that. So remember, I'm logged in currently with my practitioner account, but for training mode, I don't want to be logged in. So what happens if I access training mode and I'm logged in? Patent Center does all the work for me. It logs me out automatically and enters me into training mode. So let's get back to our submission. And actually, it's, let's see if I can 
drop this in here. And so there we go. So the file name NPL underscore, uh, that's the file that I had for my non-patent literature document. Patent Center was able to detect that and provided the document description automatically. So that's a wonderful feature uh, implemented to make the filing process fast and easy for our users. Uh, that's a great question from our attendees. And so uh, if any other questions have come up, we can take those now. And I'm not... I don't see any other questions. Great. Okay. Well, thank you again all for attending our session today. Uh, I'd like to thank the e-commerce team, uh, Kimberly Williams, who you heard also, and uh, the rest of the e-commerce team. We are uh, very excited about Patent Center. And we hope that you find it easy to use and advantageous tool for your patent applications. Uh, thank you for attending. Thank you for joining. 